We all know February is Black History Month here in Babylon. So as a Gentile, I'm here to profess, Black people, you are Israelites, you are the chosen ones, you are a prestigious people. Your history is in the Bible. In order to better understand why you are Israelites, I'm going to bring forward two witnesses from Deuteronomy 28. And if you're not familiar with it, Deuteronomy 28 outlines the curses of the Israelites for not hearkening to the voice of the Lord. Now I'll bring forth my first witness from Deuteronomy 28 and 15. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So because you didn't keep your end of the covenant, follow the law, statutes, and commandments, you've been cursed. Let's take a look at one of those curses and see if it applies. Deuteronomy 28, 66 reads, And thy life shall hang in doubt before thee, and thou shalt fear day and night, and shall have no assurance of thy life. Now, I don't know about you, I live in America, black people have no assurance of their life, and it's because you're Israelite. Welcome back to the Alpha Sphere. I don't want to. I don't want to. <laughs> I'm going to get through this video, but I never understood when people said you forgive for you. There are a lot of people that I never even began to remotely forgive in my heart. Like Brittany to Brittany in private, still holding on to resentment. What was so hard about forgiveness for me was seems like everybody just moves on with their life. And then now when you hear a woman say everybody just moved on with their life, she got stuck in whatever space that was. So if that space was 10 years ago, Brittany Renner's mind, other women that you meet, their mind is stuck in that very space 10 years ago. So the way she's acting subconsciously, she's acting from a space of a decade ago, 15 years ago, 20 years ago, depending on when these things happen to her. Let's go. And here you are, emotionally, you felt like you just did two tours in Afghanistan. Arm blown off, forever changed by the events that happened to you. There's an acceptance part too where there are some apologies you'll just never get. And you have to validate yourself. I choose forgiveness because I don't want to keep looping in the same story. Now I'll say this to y'all. When she says she chooses she chooses to validate herself or you have to validate yourself. This is what she's been doing this entire time. She believes that she's been using her body to validate herself. Just like simps lead with their wallet. They believe they're using their money to validate themselves with women. Just like cold approaching women like they're the prize. Men believe they're validating themselves by going and cold approaching that woman and getting that woman to respond to them in a positive manner. Like you have men going down, get a bowl of it. Those men believe they're validating themselves for their ability to please a woman. The bottom line is anytime a woman is with multiple men over and over and over again throughout her life, she's doing more and more psychological damage to herself. And I'm going to be honest with you. And this is real. It's going to hurt some feelings, but it's true. Some of this damage is irreversible. It can't be fixed. It can't be corrected. Will she be able to find some peace and solace in this at some point? Perhaps, but she will never be who she should have been because the psychological damage has taken place too long ago and has gone on unchecked for so long. Because that same story, like the stories that we tell ourselves about our lives are the same stories that keep us captive. The things that happen to us shape us without a doubt, but they don't define us. Your wounds, your war wounds, it just means you showed up and you fought. And that's something to be proud of. Now, I'll say this to y'all, man. And this is real talk. War wounds mean that those sores are open. They haven't scarred yet. See, we call it emotional scars. No, we all have emotional scars. We all have psychological scars. We all have physical scars. Scars are not what the concern is. Scars are okay. Scars simply mean that the wounds have healed. Let's give this woman props for understanding that she doesn't have scars, that she hasn't healed, for understanding that scars come from healing. And so if you have not healed, then getting up to fight, that, that don't mean anything. That means you're still fighting. And sometimes the war is over and you just sit and pick at the wounds. You understand? The, the war is over. You just sit and pick at the wounds. There you go. Picking at the wounds. You're picking at the wounds over and over again. Just, just picking at them. Just the wound is healing. You're picking at it again. 
a lot of times that's what women are doing. They're picking at these wounds and men do it as well. But you got to understand, man, that you have to allow yourself to heal because here's the thing that women don't understand. Trying to recover from your past trauma by creating present drama is not the way that you're ever going to overcome those things because the drama adds to the trauma and that keeps the wounds from healing because you're going to get backlash from that drama that you're not really prepared for, but you can put on a good face in public and act like you're prepared for it. The bottom line is most people aren't prepared for the fallout from their drama because they have so much trauma that they're dealing with already. You have to have a clean slate. You have to have a clean emotional state, a clean a clean emotional slate rather you have to have a clean spiritual slate you have to have a clean psychological slate you have to have a clean slate in order to be able to move forward and deal with the things that are going to come with the life that you're going to live that's why we say don't get in a relationship if you still have wounds from your past relationship don't do it because you end up being what she is now what a single mom you end up being what a woman who is still trying to find her value and validation by Surrounding herself with other men by continuing to surround herself with men and many women in this society are the same So guys who are perpetuating this go go be in a relationship go be in a relationship Love the woman marry the woman the guys who have said all of these things are not saying the one thing that needs to be said The majority of these women do need counseling Look check this out black women are tired they're tired of being independent. They're tired of being looked at as the strongest. They're tired of having to take care of the kids by themselves. They're tired of bearing all the weight. Don't believe the hype that you see on all of these social media networks. Black women are tired. And the reason why I know this is because I talk and have conversations with a lot of black women. But what a black woman really want, she want to be able to go to the soccer games. She want to not have to be the sole leader and sole provider of her family. She want to support the man who God gave her to be with. She want to be a help me. The thing is, she's been placed in this position where she's had to lead. She's had to step up to the plate. In this particular society, especially, a woman is going to say the thing that either makes her seem like the victim or the victor. She's either going to be the winner or someone else is going to be cheating in the game. So. When you hear a man talk like this and he thinks because he talks to women, this is what they're tired of. Yes, there is a rhetoric perpetuated that women were put in this situation, like they were forced into that situation. No, they proudly embrace it. Those who have it don't want to give it up until they get much older. This doesn't just cover the entire spectrum of women who are in this position and become something that she really didn't want to be in the first place. She want to support her man, she want to nurture her kids, she want to nurture her husband while pursuing things that she's passionate about. That's it. It's that simple. The thing is, she just can't find a suitable leader that she trusts. When you look at a situation like Sierra and Russell Wilson, people keep saying Sierra's an entertainer. She's an entertainer. She's a performer. No, Sierra was a performer. Right now, Sierra is not a performer. First, she's a mother and a wife. Wife comes first. And to say that she still has to do those things flies in the face of what this man is saying that women won't know women who are in that position. Even when you put them in a position where there's a man that they can come in and submit to, they still don't want to do it for the most part. Why? Because you can't just wake up one day and say, I'm going to submit to my man. I'm going to let my man lead me. We are creatures of habit. So if a woman is in the habit after 5, 10, 15 years of leading her own household, she does not know how to not be that. Yes, the work of it weighs on her. She doesn't want to do the work of it anymore. But the act of being in any other position is just a figment of her imagination. It takes as much work as she put in to be in the position she's in to be in another position. And the majority of the times, a woman just doesn't want to put in that work. She wants to still keep the same mindset, can still keep the same outlooks, still keep the same actions and activities, still keep the same interaction with the man, but have the man take over all the responsibilities of the household where he has a woman who Feels like she has power in a relationship, but she wants him to actually control things and be responsible for the way they are controlled. Let's finish. To come in and relieve her of these responsibilities so that she can finally get some rest. Don't save her. She don't want to be saved. Because that's what she wants. Rest. Yes, but you only want rest 
after you've done everything that you want to do for years. A lot of women in their 40s and 50s, even late 30s now, want rest. But no man wants to step up and take on the responsibility of a woman who's built her life the way she wants it. If I'm a man who can afford to take over a woman's life that way, I don't want the life that she's built for herself. She built the life of a single woman. I already have a life over here. The bottom line is any woman who has this situation always finds out that the man who came into her situation came into it because he couldn't do any better. Her situation was a come up for him. And newsflash, ladies, if your situation is a come up for me, that means that I can't afford your situation. My situation is not up to where yours is. Stop being delusional, expecting the impossible. Now, what I want to show y'all now, man, is a woman who is out living a certain life. And the life she's living is the life of a woman who wants to be available for purchase. Who wants her favors to be available for purchase. But she doesn't want to make the offer. So she sits and complains that men don't offer her. She complains that men don't look at her and say, OK, I'm going to give you something, because it, whether you ask or not. In other words, she's trying to deny the Ola Dodge that closed mouths don't get fed. Let's take a listen. Public service, a announcement. I'm going to say this with my chest because y'all are not going to get it. Y'all don't hear me fall on my nail missing, but here you go. First thing I want to say is, why do these women believe that they get their point across better when they just come on and speak a whole bunch of profanity? What's the difference between her and the therapist chick? If the therapist chick wouldn't have said she was a therapist, you couldn't tell. She looks like they're buddies, like they will be hanging out together, going to the same club, hanging around the same guys. I mean, going to the same school, sharing each other's clothes. They look the same way because the psychological issues that the majority of women face keep them all in the same boat where they can't separate themselves because birds of a feather flock together, especially when it comes to psychosis, man. Just because a woman don't ask for much or don't ask for anything doesn't mean fellas give her the bare minimum. Why do y'all think this bitch because a woman don't sit up here and ask you and ask you and ask you and nag you and beg you to give her shit or give her money or finance her or do anything for her? That means, oh, she doesn't need and want for shit. Let me, let me give her the bare minimum. Bitch, the bar is not set in hell. I don't understand what the fuck they're like. Why do a bitch gotta beg y'all to do some shit? Because the bitch doesn't sit up here and ask y'all for months money on the first date always get the cheese but the bitch that don't ask for nothing deserves the fucking ground and y'all give her bare minimum suck my dick i hate it here listen man the woman who asks get the cheese because she asked for the cheese you don't get the cheese because you didn't ask you're an adult be an adult adults ask for what they want adults request what they want you probably would let a man treat you any kind of way because you don't know how to request what you want. Request what you want. Ask for what you want. Even demand what you want if you want to. But don't expect anyone to give you anything because people believe that you will accept whatever you don't demand. If you don't demand it, you'll accept whatever they give you. It's your job. It's your responsibility to let someone know if indeed you want them to support you financially or give you some recompense financially. Here's the thing. You're never going to go to a job and you settle for a certain amount of money. You make a salary demand. I, pay me 100000 a year. They're like, no, 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 that ain't, no, that's not enough. No, we're going to pay you 500000 a year. Who do you think we are around here, buddy? We're not going to let you take advantage of yourself. No, they're not going to do that. That's not what happens. So if you want to be out here playing a grown woman life, then you better start acting like a grown woman and understand that nobody's going to give you anything because they're not required to. Selling your goods and services is the same no matter the method. If I offer you the money and you accept it, it's the same. If you ask for the money and I give it to you, it's the same. If I take you out to dinner, then we go back to my house, it's the same as if I saw you on the corner and picked you up. It's all the same. The difference is there's one group of women who are honest about the psychological issues that led them to their life, and there's another group of women who aren't.